Thank you very much. Okay, we've got to move the mic down. <laughs> we figured we're about uh, two feet apart. Anyways, uh, delighted to be here this morning. Thank you to the Department of Transportation, Cooney Watson, for inviting me to speak this morning. Uh, how many of you are small business owners? So, uh, great. This is what we were hoping was to get lots of you folks in the room. As uh, he had mentioned, I'm going to go through lots and lots of ideas. We've brainstormed. Uh, have looked at other entities around the country where this has happened before, where you've had some construction, and come back and, with some ideas that I think uh, most you can implement today, if not tomorrow. One of the things I wanted to point out, we do have a handout that we gave you, which I'll go over later. This is a list of uh, lots and lots of business organizations you can tap into. Who knew there were 20 chambers of commerce in the Albuquerque area? And on and on and on. There's, there's just a tremendous amount of organizations that you can reach out to. So I'll talk about that later. I also wanted to let you know we have given you an action plan. Uh, this is a sheet to keep some notes on. I can't tell you, I'm sure you've all done this too. I've been to lots and lots of uh, events where I hear speakers. And I'm pretty prolific uh, note taker. So I'll take all these notes, put them in a file, take them home. And at the end of the day, I go, wow, that's great. But there's only one or two, three ideas I really do implement. So we sort of came at this the other angle. And we said, OK, here's 10 blanks. You can use the back side. We can give you more sheets if you've got other ideas. But really, it's about listening for those one, two, three, up to 10, or whatever ideas that you can take with you and implement, having heard them today. So we also have, uh, as uh, he said at the end, we are going to have some breakout sessions. So if you can plan to stay, that would be great. Because part of what I have found in my own experience uh, being in networking is that it's about making these connections and creating relationships. And you together, as a community, as neighbors, can move this forward and, and do some things to help each other. Uh, you know, I do teach at UNM. And it's interesting. We spend a lot of time, and I teach in entrepreneurial studies, we talk a lot about uh, sort of situations where things are maybe perceived negatively. And I, and I will tell you, we, we talked the other day, I asked my students, I said, if you're all going to be entrepreneurs, problems equal profits. Anytime there's something that goes a little crazy or a little change, or there's some new direction, that usually, well, you can complain about it. But the other way to look at it is maybe there's an opportunity here to make that, turn that into something else. For example, we talked about the train. The uh, train is really not a commuter train. We talk about that. But it's, it, I could drive up and back probably in the same amount of time. But it offers so many other wonderful opportunities about being on the train, if any of you have done that, uh, taking that train when you're working. But so I ask my students, OK, you're, you're entrepreneurs. How could you take advantage of that train? Well, of course, they came back with, we would take one of the cars and make it a class. So we'd have the brain train. And you could get your MBA on your classes going up. You could have a Toastmasters club on the train. Uh, the train I've heard I, doesn't, it doesn't have a um, very extensive Wi-Fi. Well, maybe you put a satellite over that train, and you start to figure out ways to sell uh, some kind of uh, web um, connections. So we talked about something more germane to my students about parking at UNM. Difficult, correct? Uh, they've done many, many, many things to, to alleviate that. But my students, I said, OK, problems equal profits. Help me out. What are we going to do to change? the uh, circumstances in terms of parking and getting to your classes on time. So what did they come back with? They came back with a monorail, bicycle rentals, sort of like the carts that you have at the airport where you can drive your rent, uh, walk up, rent a bike, and then drive it to another place where you leave the bike at a station. I added segways. I thought that would be fun. Uh, trolley with a coffee bar, cars that fold up into a, a backpack, uh, you could have an electric operated skateboards, uh, sort of like Back to the Future. And my favorite was a concierge service. So you drive up to UNM, you leave your keys, and all of a sudden you get to go to class. So in a difficult situation or where there's a challenge, there's a, uh, what perceived as a problem, there's always wonderful opportunities. There's wonderful opportunities as an entrepreneur to come back and figure out a way to make, move that forward. So what we're going to talk about today are several areas that we think are sort of a framework for this idea of moving forward and about taking some, uh, some tested ideas that other uh, cities have used and come to uh, this same situation and try to help their small businesses move forward and succeed. So we're going to talk about, uh, well, I'll just skip to them. But it's uh, shore up your fundamentals, perfect the basics, uh, leverage your existing customers, 
partner with other businesses. You're all here. I don't know how many of you, how many of you in this room knows everybody in the room? Anybody? Nobody. So we got some folks to meet today. This is great. Uh, leverage social media. This is huge. Uh, more and more and more. I asked my students the other day, where do you get your news? You know where they get their news? Facebook. Really? I don't, I don't get my news. Out. That was interesting. And uh, they're all tweeting. So that world's changed, folks. And uh, connect with the community, meaning connect with all these different organizations. I'll talk a little bit about networking in that list. And then develop some creative marketing strategies. There's this area now that we all talk about in our marketing classes called guerrilla marketing. So that's sort of thinking outside the box. What are some new clever ideas that you can bring to bear? And, and I have a few that we'll talk about. Uh, we did not give you a copy of these slides today because I wanted you to, again, focus on those one, two, ten ideas that you can take with you. These slides will be available. They'll be posted on the website. They'll be posted on the website. Email us and we'll send you a copy. Right. But because of that, this is an interactive presentation. If any of you have any questions that you'd like to throw out, certainly uh, if it's a long one, I'm going to say let's take it offline. But if it's something we can answer today and it is of benefit to everyone, let's, let's talk about that. So one of the big things you really want to do is shore up your fundamentals. And when I say that, I mean it's about going back and thinking through your marketing. What are you doing now? Sort of an audit, if you want to call it that. Uh, look at your business. How's it running? Look at your financials. Where could you cut some costs? Where can you do some additional marketing? If you haven't done that kind of activity in a long time, this is a great opportunity to do that. Uh, most companies do that once a year, of course. but. Uh, this is an opportunity to look forward to see where can you take advantage of some of your uh, positive aspects of your business already. So how is your customer service going? Do you actually do a survey of your customers? Uh, do you have feedback? Uh, at one point I was the vice president of Kirtland Federal Credit Union. Every transaction we would send an email out through SurveyMonkey. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, now you have, uh, there's about four other different uh, programs like that you can tap into where you're going to send out a survey. How's your customer's experience? What's happening? In particular, at that point, I would also be sure when you touch any customer, if you're not doing this, that you track what's their email and how do they hear about you. Very, very important. Because what you're going to find out is if they're hearing about you through Facebook, then you ought to be doing more Facebook. If they're hearing about you through your uh, TV spots, then do more TV. It's about where are they connecting, so what's the value of your uh, promotions? So you can sort of come back and do an ROI on each of those different aspects of what you're doing to connect to them. Uh, this is the idea of collecting their uh, email addresses. How are your accounting systems working? Do you have an accounting system? What are you tracking? Have you done a, uh, uh, indices where you looked at other businesses to do a ratio? Are your costs out of line? Is your receivables slower than what's going on with other similar businesses in your uh, uh, area. Because if you can improve that, that changes the whole complexity of what happens on the back end. Uh, could you, your store or business use a remodel? You know, one of the great things to do when you get back to your office, if you're a retail store, go outside and look at it again. What's going on? What does it look like? Uh, there's a coffee shop up in Bernalillo that I had uh, done some work with. Uh, they had very little lighting out front, and quite honestly, because they said, well, most everybody stops here on their way home, and uh, it's not dark. Well, ends up that we did some analysis of some of the other coffee shops up there. Most all the work, uh, coffee was sold in the morning. Well, about half the year, that store has, it's dark. It's just because of uh, our, uh, in the winter, it's dark. So we went out there, we went out front, and guess what? No lights, couldn't see the sign. So we added a, added a light to shine up on their sign. Very simple, but look at your store from the customer's point of view. Get outside your own box, take a look from outside. What are they seeing? In some ways, you might even want to do some kind of a, a mystery shopper, but no mystery. You're the shopper. Um, one of the other things I've done over the many years I've been in marketing was that I would always keep track of an idea file. I, I have. If I've seen a great promotion, a great direct mail campaign, a great letter that somebody sent me, something that really resonated for me that I thought, wow, these guys really connected the dots. All of those types of materials I have saved. And I have a huge file uh, box at home 
that I keep track of great ideas, great business ideas that have worked for others. So for yourselves, if you've seen something or something that worked for you, in the uh, sales side of the world where I uh, teach, we have uh, pharmaceutical sales reps call that their brag book. It's a place where they put all of their successes. I'm saying, but also reach out beyond that. If you've seen somebody in another uh, business that's nearby or somebody that's a competitor that has some great idea, um, well, you might just take a look at that and see if there's something you can do to adapt that or adopt it to what you're doing. <clears throat> so the next one is about perfecting uh, the basics. Uh, how many of you have a website? So I ask how many of you don't have a website? You know, I used to be the vice president of the Albuquerque Chamber of Commerce, vice president of marketing. This was about 10 years ago, but we found that about only a third of our members had a website back then. That world has changed. But is your, is your website active? Are you updating it? Uh, there's several websites I just looked at the other day that haven't been touched for about a year. Whoa, not good, not good. So are you updating your website? Is your uh, website option, uh, functional? Uh, what are the, there's lots of th rules of thumbs about websites. Uh, I've looked at several where you have to go in and there's eight, nine, ten layers before you get to your piece of information. It should be only two or three layers. And by the way, you should have it so you can get back out. A lot of times you get sort of stuck in a corner. You're like, where am I? I'm in web world. And you want to be able to come in and out fairly easy. Uh, you want to build and maintain a Facebook page. Of course, there's a Facebook page that's personal, but now there are Facebook pages that are um, really about uh, your own business or your organization. Uh, I just uh, was working the last three years at West uh, Enterprise Center, and I was partnering with the NMSBDC, and we were doing workshops up here in Rio Rancho on how to start a small business. And it was interesting. One of the th things that we did change, a lot of those groups have a workshop that they call how to start your small business. Well, we realize if you really get down to the underlying reason people want to start a business is because they want to create their own job. So we renamed it Create Your Own Job, How to Start a Small Business. Well, most of the, these centers are getting five, ten people at their events. And you know what we were getting? But, and I'll tell you why. We started doing a Facebook um, promotion. For $27.10, we were able to reach 6,000 people that were job hunting through Facebook, had a small ad in the corner, and it would send you back to a, an announcement about our events. So create your own job, got your attention, brought you over, and we had 75 people minimum at about 10 of these events. Blew it out of the water. But it started with Facebook. Any of you have been to any of the TEDx programs here locally, TED, TED Talks? Uh, they pretty much predominantly use Facebook to promote that because they can trigger underneath, they can look for who might be a potential customer because you can get closer and closer in identifying some attributes, some uh, purchasing behavior, some value or some uh, demographic or psychographic about that person that's underneath and you can get to them. So Facebook is a huge uh, powerful tool for that. Uh, compile a database of your regular customers. How many of you have a great database of your customers? Uh, just real quick, who's, uh, how are you using that? Anybody want to tell a little quick story? How are you using your database? Are you, uh, m Me? yes, sure. Email. You're emailing. Okay, and are you doing uh, regular monthly emails? Okay. Have you alerted them about what's going to happen with uh, I-25 Paseo? I decided against that. I decided not to draw attention to it and to just keep on with our regular. We were going to do a construction kickoff party and we decided against it. Okay. And the reason was because... I didn't want to call any more attention to the drama that's been going on around this than is already out there. I, I want people... Well, I mean, we'll, we have a huge Halloween party every year. We'll have a huge Halloween right, party right. Thursday. Um, I, I decided that there's just been too much attention to the construction itself and to act like everything's normal. Right. Instead of abnormal. <laughs> well... In many ways, I, I totally agree with you that you don't want to uh, take a, you don't want to sell it from the negative side if that's what's out there. But uh, what we did find when we looked at some of the other cities as the, as it progresses, and there might be this other messaging that oh it's hard to get in and out. You're saying oh no we can get in here it's easy, well, right but now, not yet. Yeah. And I will say that if it 
becomes a problem where they they have to take a different route to get to our shop. Right. So definitely. Right. Definitely. Right. That's what I want to know. What's coming? So. Okay. Yes, sir. Speaking of advertising, uh, and it kind of goes to what you're saying about creating more drama. It seems like the newspaper plasters the front page with that information. You know, that it's that it's negative. That it's going to be difficult to get through. It goes some other direction. I'm just wondering if they could do something positive. Do we have any leverage there? Do they know how that impacts business owners? We have a few media here today. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm emailing mine to tell them to stay the hell away during rush hour. This is a traffic issue. This isn't a marketing issue. I thought this was a traffic seminar on how to get people in and out of this place because of the added traffic. I mean, I've never seen traffic as bad on Alameda as it was the very first day. 4.15, they were back all the way back to Blue Museum Drive. At 5.15, they were back beyond I-25. Traffic is the big issue. I'm hoping we can get to the nut of the issue, which is how to deal with traffic. These other areas may be of interest to some folks, but this is represented as a traffic seminar, and I hope we'll get to the traffic side of this thing. Did you want to address any of that? Um, no, you're doing a great job. Okay. Uh, you know what? We do have some folks from the transportation department who I'm sure can answer some of your questions. Yes? Yes. Yes, sir. But what we've done, I own a plumbing wholesale business, and what I've done, I've opened four openings earlier and closed them earlier. So we can get the customers in and out. We used to have seven to five. Right. And we six to four. And that's one of the suggestions we make, too, about extending your, your hours so that you can better match what's, what... Uh, is the traffic flows. So, okay. Um, well, I'll keep moving. So, develop a plan to communicate regularly. If you're not doing that already, you should add something in, whether that's a newsletter and asking about uh, what their responses are in terms of how they're feeling, what's going on. Uh, one of the things I would actually suggest, too, is that if you haven't ever done this, look at coming up with a script for how you answer the phone or if there's any questions about schedules or time that you have a specific answer that sort of comes up a lot that, that you would answer that. Um, having been in sales many, many years, you're going to tend to get the same objections or same issues that are going to show up. And so have some scripting around that so that all your folks are speaking from the same voice. Um, keep in touch with your customers. If you're not sending out a weekly or bi-weekly correspondence, uh, I'd caution about too many emails. I get too many. But there's a point in there where it makes sense or give them an option or to get in and out of your messaging, whether that's a newsletter or that you have. I know a lot of small businesses I was working with uh, this past three years at West were doing uh, blogs. And so they had information that was available, but you could come in or out depending on what information that you wanted to see. Um, include information about construction progress at some point, if that's relevant. And then uh, lead your email or newsletter with a story celebrating your business. I I'm always looking for the positive message. I know we talk a lot about New Mexico um, and the economy and all that. And I would tell you, and I, I'm going to maybe beg a question here, but I used to write a column for the Albuquerque Tribune. And one of the things I looked at was, how does New Mexico compare to other countries, not just New Mexico against other states? If New Mexico were a country, I used to live in Orange County, and we'd be real braggy about we were the seventh richest country if we were a country. California would be a country. We'd be the seventh richest. If New Mexico were a country, we'd be the uh, 34th richest uh, gross domestic product. But as a per capita income, we'd be the 23rd richest country out of 212 countries. We're still in rich America. Don't lose sight of that. Still lots of positive things going on here about what America is all about. Uh, leverage your existing customers. So how many of you have a loyalty program that you're, you have with your customers? Any kind of a, okay. So if you're, you can create some kind of an affiliation with your customers. Um, one of the things, I had a student several years ago who had uh, started a restaurant up in the Heights and he was sending out a, uh, these emails and saying, come in and get $10 off a meal. Well. This is a very high-end area. He's selling, uh, sending mail to people that had $100,000 income and more. What's $10 going to, is that going to get them excited? Probably not. 
So we thought about how can you create something else? So what we did was we created an affiliation with his customers who liked wine. Instead of giving them $10 off the meal, uh, what's a bottle of wine? It was about 10 bucks. I said, so why don't you give them a bottle of wine once every um, quarter or some period of time so they can come in and sample your wine? If you end up at the same point in terms of your cost, but now you have an affiliation with that customer who likes wine, associates that with your, your business, and it creates another connection to them. Uh, start a customer referral program, uh, enhancing your existing program. In this case, um, do you have any kind of a referral where a customer will send someone else to you? Uh, this is huge. We talked about this in our sales class. We call it a continuous chain of referrals. We're looking for meeting one person who connects you to another, to another. I actually know pretty much all the 250 CEOs in the state, surprisingly. And people always say, how'd you do that? Well, I met one of them about 10 years ago, and uh, standing next to him was another CEO who he introduced me to. I won't name all these folks. I, saw, I see them all the time. And then uh, one of them, that one I saw at another meeting, I stayed in touch, and then he introduced me to somebody. Before I knew it, I'd worked the whole room. It's called New Mexico, but I've been working in this room for a while. But it's about making that connection. For you guys, if you have a customer that really, really likes you, wow, what a great testament to tell their, have them tell your story to their other customers. Uh, encourage customers to participate in all the communications you generate. There's a lot of uh, things that are happening now where people are sort of having this dialogue where, especially in a blog, where they're addressing or commenting on your products or services so that they're staying in touch and they're your best advocate. Uh, make promotions fun or add a construction theme at some point. Uh, you could play off of some of the names, Rocky Road Ice Cream or Orange Barrel Popsicles. I mean, that's a little crazy, but it's about looking for something positive in the messaging. Uh, if you're a printer, offer fast lane service uh, specials. Uh, consider and promote construction related hours, open late on Wednesdays or on Saturdays, as you had suggested, some kind of extending your hours. Um, one of the things we found in a lot of the other cities is that they had targeted the construction workers. You've got a lot of people in your area now. If you have a service or product that would tie to them, uh, this would be a good opportunity to go out there and meet them and get them involved. Um, the other way to do this is, as I mentioned, that you have the idea of a Facebook or Twitter or some other, like a hashtag, Paseo. Uh, there is the Paseo i25.org, which I think will address some of uh, this gentleman's issues about what construction is going on where, and uh, that's going to be updated daily, daily. So PaseoI25.org, uh, I would definitely tag that and make sure you're visiting that particular website. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is to leverage your, let's see, partner with other businesses, excuse me. In this case, now what I'm looking at is there are uh, several homeowners groups up this direction, and so how can you connect to those folks and let them know that you're there? How many of you have ever gone to a meetup group or seen meetup.com? Did you ever look at meetup.com? It's M-E-E-T-U-P.com. There's over uh, 250 of these organizations in the state. There's about 100 here in Albuquerque alone. Now, of course, some of them are dance meetups. They're more hobby groups, but there are some business groups uh, at some point, uh, if someone would rise above this and take that on, you guys could create a meetup group for each other, in a sense, where you could meet and, and trade ideas, kind of like what this opportunity represents today. But also, the meetup groups could be about some of your particular customers. If you're not connecting that way, it's a great way to connect. If you get a chance, go to meetup.com and put in a particular area of interest and see what comes in, in particular something along your industry or your products or services. Did you raise your hand? No. Yeah, have you gone to one? Um, it's for diving. <laughs> it's for diving? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Neighborhood Coordination has all the recognized neighborhood associations on their list. The main one in this area is District 4 Coalition, which includes 24, 25 neighborhoods the in the Northeast area, generally north and south of and, and what's the website for that? It's CABQ, the government. Um, oh, okay. Website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and we have that information back at my office, too. So if you know the website, we'll be happy to send that. Have you contacted them or talked to them? Or yeah. you work yeah. with them, sir? They're, yeah. They're aware. 
Okay. But I'm curious, in particular with your business, have you found that they're helpful to help you? No, I have a small business that, that I work at, out, of, out of the house, but I'm also president of the Neighborhood Association, and we're, we're fighting some of this stuff and have raised several issues. And unfortunately, we've not heard anything back yet. Okay. So what's supposed to happen hasn't been happening. Okay. But if you wanted to schedule, for example, the meetings or something like that, we could get that to you. You can do that. And everybody, this is uh, Patty Watson. If you email me through the website, I'm the one who answers all the emails. So all you need to do is email me through the website. And that's the sale I can do myself. My sense of it is that what, what really was an underlying theme that showed up in other cities where this has happened or anything like this is that uh, you guys as small business owners in the, become partners in this. You become a community rather than sometimes maybe you're not talking to each other. This is an opportunity for you guys to work together to uh, share information, to help. Uh, I did ask my students the other day, I said, okay, what would you do? Give me some creative ideas. And so one of theirs was that they did cross promotions. You go to one store and there's a discount, not at their store, but at the store down the street. And then that store has a discount for your store. So in a way, we have one idea there later about creating some kind of a passbook or pass, um, like a passport to the businesses here. I know the state has done that with the wine community. And there's, what, 52 wineries in the state. They have a passbook or passport. If you visit all the wineries in the state, you can get uh, coupons. And in particular, I think, you can, I think they still have it, so you can go on a trip. But anyways. Uh, so it's about connecting with other businesses. Uh, sharing ideas. So um, this is that idea of uh, maybe a meetup group or Facebook. There's another website out there called Yammer. Anybody heard of Yammer? Mm -hmm. Yammer's a new one. Yammer's where you can uh, tie together. In fact, Doug, or where are you? Doug, you, you're the one who mentioned Yammer. Tell us about Yammer. Yeah, it was new to me. So, but there's there's others that are out there. So, uh, anyways, the idea then is, and this was some of the things I talked about. It's about sharing customer connections, and uh, so it's about helping each other by connecting to each other. Uh, you know, years ago I used to be the vice president of marketing for Transamerica nationally, and we did a lot of promotions where we would tie together. I had friends uh, in Orange County who were working at. Um, some of the consumer goods companies, and they would have cross promotions. So if you've got barbecue sauce to sell, you give a coupon for hot dog buns. And the hot dog buns, would folks would have a coupon for the hot dogs. And then they'd go back to the barbecue. So you'd have one sort of coupon for all of that. Um, that's such a great idea if you have businesses that tie together. So once you meet people here or look around your neighborhood and think, who else, who's, who has my customer in their door have, uh, that's in the neighborhood? And who's, who, who can I, how can I connect to them? So it's making that call and making that connection. Uh, then there's this Paseo Passport, I just think is a fun idea. Um, the, uh, this would be some, somebody would have to sort of step up to the table and take this one on. Uh, this one here is about cooperative advertising. This will be one of the uh, groups that we have afterwards. It's consider pooling your advertising resources. I was looking uh, this week, paying more attention. I came up here two or three times and looked in the neighborhood, and I found this, for example, the Luke, Go Local Boom, if any of you are familiar with this. Uh, uh, this is a great resource, another one of these sort of neighborhood uh, publications where you can advertise in there. I'm not selling his advertising, but there's things like this that are up here that you could maybe connect into. 
and look for ways that you could tie your advertising. You actually could probably buy advertising together on billboards or buy, co collaborate and buy TV radio spots as a team. Uh, one of the other big areas is leveraging social media. Uh, so we talked a little bit about that. How many are, of you are on Facebook? Yes. How many of you are on LinkedIn? How many of you are Twittering right now? No. How many of you are on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? I think you're on Twitter too? Okay. Um, does that help you with your business? In the back? The Twitter does? It does. Uh, we're in the fish industry, so people want to know what's going on. And uh, Facebook, we do it every day, but Twitter seems to be more of a middle ground. So we get more uh, demographics on Facebook, and we use it daily. So that's our main, uh, our main source of, media of uh, advertising. But also. Really? And what's your business again? We're in the business. Oh, okay. Okay. We also use, uh, we do have an a, a email list, and we, we do a, a newsletter every month. And uh, when, this got, when this took off, we actually gave them directions on how to get there, how to leave early. We actually did, um, went the route ourselves to see it for the time it was. And we have over 6,000 people on the email list, and probably about, surprisingly, about a lot of people came into the studio as well as thank you for doing that. Because they oh, really? Right. So it was huge. And that's what we do every day. You, you, know, you know, it's funny. I used to write a column for the Albuquerque Tribune when it was around. And it was a small business column. But at the time, just for fun, just that's what those columnists do, I wrote a thing. I said, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, none of it's working for me. I'm going to drop it all just to see who would react. <laughs> you kind of want to push the button. And if any of you know Randy Burge, any of you know Randy Burge? He started the New Mexico Tech Council. To this day, about five years later, he still sends me articles going, you're an idiot, this is great, Twitter works, here's why. I'm like, I was just kidding. But anyways, uh, one of the articles he sent, which I talk about later in here, was that there was a uh, bakery in New York. Because I thought, how are you going to use Twitter? I guess it's because at the time I was at Kirtland Federal Credit Union and our rates changed once a month. I'm going to Twitter you once a month? Come on. You know, Twitter's about constant sort of feedback. Well, there was a bakery in New York that when their buns come out hot, they send a Twitter message to all of their affiliated customers or, or best customers to say the buns are hot, come on over. And I, that was, they doubled their uh, bun sales and our hot bread sales because they were connecting to their customers through this very timely thing called Twitter. Who knew? So it's really about location and time on some level. You're looking for this sort of relationship in terms of how that would tie. But if you look at all of the messaging around social media, uh, you know, one of my students this past year, I had her come in and give a speech. Uh, she's making six figures and uh, she's selling real estate. So I had her come in and talk about how she's selling her real estate services. And at the end of the day, it was all Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. She used a blog. She has an email that goes out. All the stuff I used to do as a marketing manager at Hyundai, corporate, Transamerica, TV, radio, billboards, all of that, she didn't use any of it. Shocked me. I knew I was old. At that point, you know you're old when you sit there and you go, wow, nothing I ever did is what they're using now. So, but this is her case and it's social media and she's marketing to mostly first time home buyers and people that are relocating here that are younger. So they get that. Oh, you have to be careful. Do you know the fastest growing population segment in Facebook is women 65 years and older? Think about that. So you have to be careful with this messaging about where, where you think who's using this and uh, whether it's social, what, what aspect of social media. It's becoming more prevalent for all of us. So. Uh, anyways, you could do a tweet, tweet, a weekly tweet, have a hashtag shop a sale, announcing your specials. Uh, you could have a two-for-one lunch today the, uh, at the Garden Cafe in Jefferson feature, featuring the commuter salad. So there's ways around that. That particular message is 137 words or char excuse me, characters. So it would fit within their uh, requirement or vernacular of Twitter. Um, 
Facebook, post advertisement targeting lo local co consumers are more narrowly a target, target segment interested in your products or services. This goes back to what I was doing up at the, with the Small Business Development Center, and we were getting folks to show up at our uh, Start Your Own Business workshop. I was pretty surprised after I put it in and I thought, I'm seeing the one set of numbers telling me 6,000 people had gotten this, but 150 people had opened it, and there were some fairly substantial numbers, but I'm thinking, wow, how, am I, how much am I paying for this? Well, it was $27 and one set. I can deal with that. Uh, Yelp, how many of you are familiar with Yelp? Now, there's a gentleman here in the state, Howie. Uh, I haven't talked to him for a couple weeks, but before I was, we talked about coming in here today. Uh, Howie runs the Yelp uh, sort of um, news for New Mexico or connection in New Mexico. He's the liaison. He'd be fun to talk to about what are you selling. He sends out Yelp messages about once every week and what does he talk about? This last one he sent out was about Halloween uh, related businesses about where can, you can get a costume or mask. Uh, the one before was Red Chili where it was tied to, uh, or one of them before was Red Chili tied to where's the best ch chili restaurant or, or New Mexico uh, green chili. But his whole messaging is it's pretty tied to a particular segment. So to talk to him about sort of messaging around can Yelp help us promote businesses up here in this area. Um, they have another program in there called Targeting uh, the Elites where you can use Yelp to target a very specific high-end group that does a lot of uh, uh, recommendations and evaluations of businesses. So you want to be on their good side and talk to them and talk to Howie and make sure that Yelp is giving you good coverage. How many of you also use other services like Urban Spoon? Any of you are on that? Or um, do you use that or go to that? Yeah, and there's Angie's List and others. Some of them do cost some money, but a lot of these, it's just really paying attention. And, and again, Back to my Albuquerque Tribune article, I, I thought, oh, 